Unfortunately, like death and taxes, clogs are pretty much inevitable. Clogs occur for a number of reasons. Uh, long hair, greases and lipids in the line, and then most commonly out in the burbs is roots. Roots can be a real bugbear for the average homeowner and they can be extremely expensive to correct. So I've made a kind of a basic illustration of a home, okay, to illustrate a point here. The sewer line coming out of this home, running through the front yard, should angle down and continue always at a constant pitch. Normally the, 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 uh, the, the standard pitch is a quarter of an inch per foot, okay? What happens a lot of time because of the weight of the earth above them and the enormous power of tree roots, which is just incredible, I'll go into that in a second, you get a belly or what we call in the trade a sag in the line. So yes, the, the water will still go out down the drain and run, but instead of running and continuing down this way and out to the sewer, we have a belly, the sag in the line, and what happens is all of the waste just kind of sits there, nasty, and pulls up. So when that happens, the plumber will take a snake, and the snake is a, is a big machine, it's a large, generally a two-piece affair, and there's a half-inch cable that comes off of it with a claw, like a big metal blade. It's the same width of the pipe. Let's say this is a six inch pipe, you'd have a big double six inch blade. And the idea would be to cut through, in a constant circular motion, cut through whatever's blocking here. Well the problem with a sag is that you'll go right through and out into the sewer and then right back out, but that, that junk will still be in the line. Could be easily 30, 40 feet of it. So in which case, the sad news is that you need a backhoe. Okay, we're gonna dig up that line, remove the affected pipe, and install it at the proper pitch so the, the problem is rectified. That's 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars worth of work. So let's eliminate the sag from the equation for a second and now we've got a properly installed, properly pitched sewer line. You see how I've drawn these hubs in here? This hub is where big sec 10 foot sections of pipe are being joined together. Inside that hub, normally speaking, is lead poured in there. Sometimes it's an elastomeric seal of rubber in newer installations, but for this purpose we're going to talk about an older house. Now what happens is over a hundred years, the big oak tree that grandpa planted is now this big fearsome thing and these roots have just unbelievable um, sheer power to them. What they do is they'll go searching for any source of water. Now with a 30 foot tall tree you might have a root system the size of a Volkswagen, okay? And when the root a little tiny tendril of a root, the width of a pen, gets inside this joint and finds that water in there over two years. It can grow to the width of a man's leg, bust the pipe out from the inside and cause all, all hell. So the idea here is, especially when, when you know that you have a root penetration of the line, you maintain that line. Okay, you do so by accessing any number of cleanouts that are code mandated. You have to have cleanouts in the drainage system because clogs like death and taxes happen. So you'll get a big clump of roots. Normally speaking, you'd have, this is a close up here of what the cleanout would look like, a four inch cleanout. Let's say somewhere in the basement, you have that four inch cleanout right here. So that's a plug that you can remove from the drainage system. Bring in a heavy duty snake, a big machine, this is best left to professionals or you can hurt yourself with the machine if you don't know what you're doing. And you can run this line, again, this double clawed fitting straight down the pipe and it's gonna run in and maybe at 20 or 30 feet it's gonna encounter the roots and then a fight is going to ensue and it's gonna be chopping and ripping and it's very violent. And you'll feel the snake kind of torque up and not move through, in which case you pull back and you'll pull back, I guarantee, a big, huge knot of roots. Now to clear this line effectively, a lazier drain cleaner will go in there, hit that knot of roots, cause the water to go down and call it a day. Well, yeah, we've gotten this chunk of roots right here, but what we don't know is that all the way down the line, we've got root penetration, okay? So a good reaming of the pipe is absolutely necessary because not only do we have one joint, we have three of these hubs. And we might even have a pipe with holes in it in which case the root's just strangling the pipe. And a lot of times it's a hopeless situation and like I said in the beginning, the, the roots have just crushed the pipe and completely destroyed it. Routine maintenance of the plumbing system is uh, in everybody's best interest. Now, another type of cleanout that you might see 
in the house or in the home is an end cleanout. This is what we call an end cleanout versus a running cleanout. Running meaning it's in line with the pipe. An end cleanout, get rid of my little tree here. An end cleanout you would see on the edge of a Y, right? A Y fitting being just like what it sounds, a Y. Like this. So this would be the end of a run. This could be a vertical drain coming down from upstairs into that Y and the waste would run out that way and you have this end clean out for specifically the purpose of being able to remove it and snake the line from the building out. And that's how you'd clear a drain.